Hello, we're going to deal with a little bit about Twitter. Now this would work better as a discussion and a hands-on, hey, try this, let's ask some questions, let's figure this out, let's look at this. Um, I look at it more from a professional learning network, not so much in the classroom with kids. That would be a different idea. Um, this is me. I've been on Twitter, I don't know, five, six years. Um, most recently, um, and in the school year, I was just peeking on, and I follow Raspberry Pi, which is up in the top right corner there, a little computer-based thing. And they retweeted something from Matt Richardson, who's in California, saying, hey, I'm going to be in the Cleveland area in a couple days. Anybody want to talk? So I tweeted right back to him and said, yeah, you want to come talk to my students? So I was able to arrange a guest speaker in two days from California because I was on Twitter. He is an evangelist for Raspberry Pi, which is, again, techie, geeky kind of thing, and I have some of them in class. But he's also an author of these three books and a uh, contributing editor for Make Magazine, which is, again, for techies and geekies. Um, it was great. That, that dual kind of presentation was awesome for the kids. Uh, someone in my network shared out that they needed to create a geometry final exam. Oh, my gosh. So I just grabbed my uh, Google Doc link of my final exam and shared it to them. They could use any of the questions they wanted. We're doing 3D shapes in geometry at the end of the school year, and some kids are having trouble with them. And someone on my network had shared this idea that, hey, use Play-Doh to have the kids build the 3D shapes, and they can manipulate them a little bit more. And that was, came up with a great idea, especially when we're trying to do hollow stuff, um, not solid things, um, kind of like a cinder block where it's got holes in it. You know, it's not a solid cube. It's a cube with square holes in it. So I find news on Twitter first more than anything else. I also had heard, found on Twitter, I was on Twitter Saturday morning, and saw a tweet about the first lady was giving the commencement speech at Oberlin College. And they shared out a link to the live stream. So I popped that open and watched her commencement speech. I also find out about new tools and articles from magazines that I follow. I find out about uh, webinars and conferences and workshops and blog posts that people are sharing and writing about. Um, just you know, for my learning, I find out about books I should be reading. Uh, Redecide is on my list for summer 2015. The others I had read before, but I found out about them on Twitter. I also get to talk to authors on Twitter. I've read these books and I've talked to these guys about grading and assessment and standards-based learning often. Uh, talk to other authors too. Uh, for the classroom school kind of thing, you know, with Promote your kids, promote what your classroom is doing, promote your school, promote the learning. What's happening? Some districts are using it as a district PLN. They've got a hashtag and they're sharing and contributing and um, going after things that way. Follow conferences. If you can't get to a conference, a conference has a hashtag. Find the hashtag, follow the hashtag people at the conference. You're going to be tweeting out resources and ideas and quotes and thoughts and just all sorts of stuff. Just find the hashtag and get it, follow it on Twitter. Um, somebody wanted to put together a list of all the education conferences, so they started a uh, open Google uh, spreadsheet and they shared out the link and they're crowdsourcing it on Twitter. There are awesome educational chats. They're about an hour long. They have certain times are scheduled. These are the ones that I participate in most often. Occasionally jump into some others. Um, yes, there is a list somewhere of them. If you just Google educational Twitter chats, it'll come up with a couple places where the list is. I think we need to be using it for actual just research on topics and teaching kids how to use it for researching a topic. They're going to come up with a university that is just presenting uh, a paper on that topic or a company that's just came up with some idea about that topic. Uh, they'll come up with a company that's involved in that topic, and maybe they can contact them by email. I mean, it, it's such a great way to find primary sources. Yes, people have lots of things talking about how to use it in the classroom. You can go after that aspect also. Teachers say it's one of the greatest things that they finally did. Um, yes, it's hard to get accustomed to it at first because it is a new modality. Some people say it takes at least a month to get handy with it. And you could use it for 10 minutes a week, an hour a week, 10 minutes a day. And What fits you? 
what are you getting out of it? And I will guarantee you, once you start using it and guests are getting something out of it, you'll start finding ways to use it more. It is PD 24-7, 365. I talk to people around the world at all times of the day, um, just sharing ideas and thoughts. It's about having conversations. Now, when you're on Twitter, especially if you're in a chat, it is okay to lurk. Lurk is you're just hanging out, you're just reading what everybody else is saying, just trying to get ideas, and that is fine. But it would be good if you actually contribute something to the Twitter sphere and not just take. Um, some people do just jump in, and that's fine. Share. It is about conversations and discussions, not just listening. Though you can do a lot of just listening. That's fine. Learn. Sometimes the chats are hard because they are like drinking from a fire hose. There's so much going on. Such a the feed is just a waterfall of information. Uh, Sat Chat West Coast one day had 2,000 tweets in an hour. That's a bunch. Some have more, but some have less. I've been on a chat where there's seven people. I've been also been on a chat where there's 100 people and more. So, yeah, chats can be like you're at that rock concert and trying to have a conversation with everybody, trying to listen to everybody. Not going to work for me. It is perfectly okay to pull somebody aside, so to speak, and just have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. You like what someone said, reply to them, ask them questions, talk to them about this. That's fine. For the most part, chats are storified. They are archived. Storyfy is a web-based service. It's free. Uh, someone at the end of the chat is going to storyfy it and then share out the link. Hey, our chat was just storyfied. Here it is. So you can go back and read through the chat. So you don't have to catch everything the first time. So time to get started. You need to get on Twitter. Start an account. Um, you need to get a picture there. Picture of you, a picture of an icon, picture of your classroom, a uh, picture of your favorite flower, something. Something that people are going to identify with you. You want to get rid of that egg that shows up as a, new, as a newborn. You also want to put something into your profile. People want to know who you are. Are you a second grade teacher? Are you a language arts specialist? Are you a high school te tech coordinator? Are you a principal? Something so we know who you are. Um, so we have a better feel for do we want to follow you or not? Other than all the great things you're sharing with, with you, you know, if you tell me you're a high school science teacher, I'm pretty inclined to follow you. I teach science and math. Um, you tell me you're a kindergarten teacher, I'm not going to jump on following you the first time. But if you tell me nothing about you, I'm not going to follow you at all. Don't know who you are. Don't know what you do. So Now, once you get on, you want to start finding things to follow. Uh, do you have a magazine you read? Put it into the, the, to the Twitter search bar. Do you have an organization? Put it in the search bar. Do you know the name of some movers and shakers in education that you've, that you've read their books from or seen um, videos of them? Put their name in. Start following stuff. This is my Twitter page. When I log into Twitter, this is what I get. Top left, home, notifications, messages. Messages are direct messages, one-on-one -on -one kind of thing. Notifications is where someone has mentioned me in something. They've mentioned Shirky17, whether they're talking to me or whether they're talking about me. Um, the center is the feed. Everybody I follow, whenever they, send, whenever they tweet something out, shows up there. The right... Twitter recommends people to follow. I don't really pay attention to that. The bottom left trends on Twitter, I don't pay attention to that at all. Top right, when you want to tweet something, you click on that and it opens up a box for you to tweet. Search Twitter. Um, some people, when they create a, when they have a big group of people that they're following, their feed just moves too fast, so they create lists. And so they kind of take all their followers and break them up, categorize them. Here's all the science people. Here's all the first grade teachers. And so then they, they go and they look at a, li look at a list. And it's easier to, to, to look at the feed of part of your followers and everybody. Some people out there have already created lists and have made them public. You can make your list private or public. Again, a page that has all the chats and their times. Now, if you're going to be in a chat, I would recommend using TweetDeck or HootSuite. TweetDeck is a web-based service. It's tied into your Twitter account. You just go to TweetDeck and say, yes, log in with my Twitter account. Um, they're kind of like TweetDeck is owned by Twitter or something like that. And you make columns for things that you want to follow. 
So you're going to get a home column, you're going to get a notifications column, then you start adding columns. Um, this most recent chat I have followed was SatChat West Coast, so there's a column for SatChat West Coast. So it searches for everything about SatChat West Coast. Easiest way to do uh, chats on the phone, very difficult. Hootsuite's the other thing. Uh, people use an app, Hootsuite, on their mobile devices to do chats. Now, Twitter is 140 characters, good and bad. You got to think about the word you want to say. Um, you have to use abbreviations. And you have to understand abbreviations that some people are using, or you have to ask them. There is a little lingo. If you're in a chat, Q1 is the first question. A1 is when you answer. So the, the moderator is going to say Q1 and ask a question. Then when you reply with the hashtag, you want to put A1. Um, S little s is for students and capital T lowercase s is for teachers. Neil deGrasse Tyson, a uh, big astronomer guy who's on social networking, also uh, had a, has a show on National Ge Geographic Channel called Star Talk. He mo most recently had an interview with Biz Stone, who is one of the founders of, one of the co-founders of Twitter. And it was a good show. Here are some resources about how to use Twitter. EduBlogger is Sue Waters down in Australia. Yeah, it's Australia. And she's got some nice guides on how to use it. And Cyberary Man is Jerry, and he's got a page for everything. And here's his Twitter for Beginners page. This is a quote by Kevin Honeycutt, and it, I just see, man, yeah, if we can, if I can connect to thousands of people, student has a question, I don't know the answer. I can Google it, but I can also throw it out to that my thousand people and those thousand people send it out to their thousand people, and it, it's about it's about making connections across the world and finding experts elsewhere, and connecting our kids to experts. That's big. 